Welcome to this clear fact. Now, today we continue what we started last time in... And last time you were telling us that um, when you do IPR, you always remove a little less than what you're seeing on the clinic. So I'm really excited for your information about that. You want to know why? Yeah. You're going to know today. My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. And my name is Michaela Senat. I'm a general dentist in Germany. And we start right after this. If you like these videos, subscribe to the channel and click on the little bell that you're going to be notified every time we upload a new video and give us the thumbs up. Michela! Stefan! Oui! <laughs> Ça va bien? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all my German. Very good. At least something. So, um, last time we were talking about IPR and at the end, you said something really interesting because we were talking about the numbers we were seeing wait, on the wait, clinic. Wait, 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 what? Wait, wait. What do you mean at the end I was saying something interesting? I was saying <laughs> something interesting the whole video. Yes, that's true. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but even more interesting. So, and um, what was in my head, you know, all the time, I could not really sleep about what you were saying. So um, what you said was, we see the little numbers on IPR, what we have to do as dentists, you know, um, in the clinic, uh, what we see on the clinic and have to do on the chair, you know, when our patient is sitting in front of us. And you said, you do always remove a little bit less. Why? Tell a us. A little why. bit less. A little bit. Like a little bit less. <laughs> do you know why, Michela? I do know why, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> oh. Well, the, the way the software calculates the IPR is really uh, a little bit different because it will calculate how much IPR to do to the second decimal. And it will round up the number. Meaning that if the software calculates that you need to remove 0.22 millimeters of space between two teeth, it will ask you to remove 0.3. If the software calculates to remove 0.31, it will ask you to remove 0.4. So if you have some IPR to do only on uh, one place, it does, it's not a big impact. But let's say you have IPR to do from premolar to premolar because you have a lot of IPR to do. Then if you really remove all the IPR like it is asked, you know what it can do at the end? Create some space. Bravo. <laughs> you will receive your prize coming to Germany in a couple of weeks. <laughs> but it, this is exactly what happens. It, it gives you, uh, it, you might I rather the, the last aligner have all the teeth perfectly aligned, everything is good, but you have some residual spaces between the teeth. So what can we do with that? So that's it, Stefan. I just wanted to ask you because usually, uh, we said last time, um, people are a little bit afraid to do that IPR, but um, once you do feel comfortable, you do it in a nice way. Suddenly, maybe you realize at the end of your treatment, oh my God, my contact points are maybe not you know, as strong um, as I wish them to be because we know there are different contact points. So what are you doing? Let's say you had IPR from um, premolar to premolar on the lower or upper arch, doesn't matter. And then you notice, well, your contact points need to be a little bit stronger. So what's your solution on that? Well, the first solution is to remove a little bit less of what's asked from the IPR. That's the first thing uh, and you know and some people say yeah but how you know if I remove less maybe uh, think of how I mean how how many aligners do you give your patients every time I see my patients every 10 weeks I have a lot of experience I do not recommend you do that if you're only starting with clear aligner some will see their patient when they start every four weeks some will see them every six weeks but the thing is what do we do when we see our patient in following up one of the thing we check is the contact between the teeth. 
and what are the movements that are coming. So if I see that between two teeth, I'm supposed to do IPR, but I have a big space, I don't have to do the IPR. If I see that I'm not supposed to do IPR and I have a really big contact and I have some rotation to do there, or well, maybe I need to remove a little bit more of this. So again, the software is there to help, but it's not really there to take decisions. Uh, you are the doctor, you like those two little letters in front of your name. Well, you have to be the doctor because otherwise if the software tells us to do everything and we just follow it, we're technicians. We're not dentists anymore. What do you um, think about that, Michela? It, it, that was really wise. Um, yes. Um, you know what I just thought? Um, even the the tip what we gave you on the last video. So if you did not watch that, uh, check out the last uh, clear facts and of course all the others, but especially the last one on IPR, because we were talking about that you can really um, maybe separate your IPR in different appointments. And this is where that really helps you, that you don't remove like 0.5 at the beginning, where you may be in that whole treatment, you only should have removed 0.41. So, and this is really helpful what you were saying. So just make really a clever appointments, maybe see your patients, not at the beginning, all 10 weeks, maybe all six weeks. This is how we are doing it. And um, I think then it's a really- um, You see them yeah. every six weeks now? Usually every six weeks. Yeah. It, it a little bit depends on um, mm -hmm. what the Invisalign coordinator has for a feeling. You know how the patient, maybe like uh, children, yeah. sometimes we see a little bit often, more often other adults, they live far away, they get all their aligners and we just have another way of communication or checking their appointments. Yeah. So a little bit depends, of course, it's uh, um, every time individual. So, um, mm -hmm. okay, but is there something else we have to maybe know? about yeah because it, you, you know some dentists could say yeah but stefan michela i did everything you 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 say i was but still i still have some residual spaces at the end what do i do well just come back from the next video and we will tell you that's true right michela yes right and we interesting so um yeah that was all we had for you today my name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education Program for the Clear Institute. And my name is Michaela Sinat. I'm a general dentist in Germany. Oh, you are. Oh, if you stayed up to here, it's because you really like these videos. Now, if you like these videos, you probably subscribe to this channel. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? And click on the little bell that you're gonna be notified every time we upload a new video. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> give us the thumbs up. <laughs> Don't that forget you give to us the thumbs up the th every time you give us the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what we have for you today. <laughs>